Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios. Hey, and it's another episode of our Elite Series Skypes, talking to our pros, seeing what they're doing uh, with this shorter time period. Now that we know our schedule going forward, the light is uh, completely visible at the end of the tunnel. And we're talking to North Carolina pro Shane Leinberger, seeing what he's doing during his time off. And Shane, how's it been during this break? Probably not the best, but it is a little time at home, a good, good fishing time of year to be in North Carolina. Yeah, I've gotten to uh, gotten to fish around the house a lot this spring. Uh, you know, something I hadn't got to do in the last five or six years, being being on the Elite Series and all. It's just you know keeps you going, and uh, got to spend a lot of time at home, probably more so than my wife would like. But um, you know, it's uh, it, it's been good. I've enjoyed it, but I'm sure ready to get back after the uh, get back after the Elite Series and let's get this year rolling. So we've got the schedule out. We obviously know uh, what's ahead of us. And just a few weeks from now, you know, we'll be at Lake Eufaula. That June time period, we obviously scheduled it for August or for April, but we know that Lake Eufaula is going to present a different story no matter which time of year we went. So what are you expecting from that first day of competition back uh, June 10th, uh, what you'll see at Lake Eufaula, what the fans should see? Yeah, well, actually, that's good. That's uh, the day after my birthday, so I'm expecting a really big birthday present from Lake Eufaula. Um, so, <laughs> but I think so you're going to see, uh, I think you're going to see a mixture of things. That they, uh, um, you know, obviously the, uh, you fall is known for the offshore brush piles and ledges and things like that. But, um, I think you're going to see some of that play, but I also think you're going to see a lot of shallow, uh, shallow fish play also because, uh, man, it's been, uh, been unseasonably cold here, you know, especially for the last uh, month or so we got started off where everything was hot and then all of a sudden it got cold and i think tomorrow morning here is supposed to be like 35 degrees which uh down there it's been cool also so it's kind of held things back a little bit which is probably probably be good for me uh you know as far as shallow fishing so um like i said i think you can expect a little bit of everything well, and that's what I was going to say was one of the times that we've seen you on Bassmaster Live in the past was back at Lake Dardanelle. I believe it was that May, June time yep. period. The fish were shallow. Obviously, they stay shallow at Dardanelle most times a year, but that top water bite, but it's that post-spawn time where it gets tough. So for someone like you or the other Carolina pros that like throwing a pop bar and things like that, is that something that we should see or will it still be some of those more faster type moving top waters and things if you are up shallow? I think you're going to see a little bit of everything. Uh, I think that unless it just turns really, really hot, really, really fast, uh, I think we'll still catch, uh, we'll catch, you know, the tail end of the shad spawn first thing in the morning. And then I think you're going to see a lot of uh, guys that are fishing shallow catch fry garters on pop bars and uh, wacky worms, things of that nature. And then probably, you know, the way a lot of those guys like to fish, most of them are going to concentrate offshore solely. Um, I'm myself possibly, I, I want to try to mix it up a little bit. Um, I don't think you can win the tournament shallow there, but if you can get off to a good start and then maybe move offshore and maybe catch you a couple kickers and get you on up there where you need to be around that, you know, that 20 pound mark, that's kind of, kind of my game plan going into it, but, uh, we'll see what happens. A lot of people want to know during this break, what do Elite Series pros do? Obviously, they like to fish, and it's a great time of year to fish, so you're going to jump in to some of the local tournaments. Local tournaments for you are a little different, though, because it's basically a mini Elite Series field or a mini professional field with how many pros are in that 30-mile radius of that Lake Norman region. So how's it been getting that competitive taste against some top-level competition and all the local sticks in your region um, uh, during this break? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we've been having little tournaments through the week and stuff with this coronavirus going on. A lot of guys aren't working, so uh, we've just been fishing. And we'll have a uh, – we got actually a little deal tomorrow at High Rock where, um, you know, myself, Rob Dye will be there. Um, I think Shane Hughes coming. Uh, I think Brian Thrift's coming. You know, we've got a our, – our wildcasts That's around here are a little different right than they are in most places. Uh <laughs> You know, it's uh, kind of difficult to win those. You, you got to have your, uh, you got to have all your ducks in a row and things like that. So we just been trying to stay sharp by fishing against each other. You know, when you can fish against competition like that, uh, kind of let you know where you're standing. 
Well, it's a little different, I guess. If you put it on your resume, got third in my local club tournament, you have to specify <laughs> who was in that local club tournament so that you can get those sponsors. But obviously, you 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 also do other stuff. It looks like you're in the shop. Are you taking care of some tackle prep? Are you uh, tinkering in the shop today? What's going on? Yeah, I'm over here actually at uh, True South Custom Lures. My buddy John over here is uh, he's built me some stuff to take fishing tomorrow. Actually. Uh, What'd you do that stuff, John? We got, we got him working today. Build me some uh build me some swim jigs. Those are also double at you follow. What else we got in here? I don't, oh, y'all can't see that other stuff. But uh <laughs> <laughs> but we're keeping him busy and uh, you know, he's trying to keep us going with uh all the good quality stuff he makes and I have to come over here and supervise occasionally, so that's kinda what I'm doing today. Well, for the for you, your approach to the rest of the Elite Series might be a little different than past years. Normally around this June time period, we only have two or three events, maybe three or four events left. We're at the middle of the season. It's just the smallmouth swing. You kind of know where you are in the Angler of the Year race, the classic hunt, things like that. This year, it's a little different. The second event of the year going to be in June. The third event of the year in July. It's going to, once it starts slow, it'll take off really fast, and we're going to knock out these events. So for you... Uh, recovering from a bad event, you're going to jump right back in the swing of things. But also trying to carry momentum from a good event, you're going to be right back on the water the next the next week. So for you approaching that heavy uh, heavy schedule and that that hectic time period, what's that like for an elite series pro prepping, making sure he has everything he needs for those tournaments? You know the good the good thing about that is uh, um, when we have those those three right there together, it's uh, three fisheries that are. Um, that are very close in nature. You know, a lot of, you have a lot of the same things. You're going to have some smallmouth play at uh, Cayuga, I'm sure. Um, when we go to the, the river, of course, you know, the smallmouth are going to dominate. And when we go to Champlain, I think you're going to see probably about a 50-50 mix of both. But but it's, they're all going to fish very similar, of course, except for the river, because it's, it's, its own, it's its own thing. But, um, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, small Ned rigs, things of that nature. And um, I think even at Champlain, you're probably going to see some of that come into play and probably some top water, things like that. But as far as prepping for that, you know, you've got to kind of take the kitchen sink just in case. Uh, everybody says, why do you carry all this stuff in your boat? Well, how many times have you been out there and said, man, I wish I had this? Well, I took it out. With these events the way they are, there will be no taking anything out. The boat's going to run a lot slower and a lot heavier, but, you know, that's okay. That's just kind of part of it. So for Shane Leinberger, this time of the year, well, let's just call it that mid to late May time period in the, the southeast, the mid-Atlantic region where you are in North Carolina, what are – I'm going to put you on the spot with – maybe three baits that you will always have on your front deck that mid-May, uh, late-May time period, wherever you are in the country probably that you're going to be fishing. What are three baits that you know that you're going to use and lean on? Uh, of course, the uh, True South makes a little buzz bait. It's called a V-twin. Um, I always have that. Didn't look that big in the water. I always have a jig, and I always have a pop bar. Can't live without the pop bar. You know, the old Fable P-70 that <laughs> that everybody goes crazy for. I've bought them and bought them and bought them over the years. I probably right should never buy any more, <laughs> but, right but, but I buy every one I get, I can get my hands on just for that time of year. You know, it's, um, it's kind of a staple, especially for me. Well, that hunt for the classic is obviously something everyone puts on their list when they start the season. That's a goal. They obviously want to win every single event if they possibly could. I know somebody like Brandon Polinick has said, my goal is to win every single tournament, and I'll keep striving for that till I can't. But if you can't win every tournament, you can't win AOI, the classic is something you want to accomplish. So what would that mean to you to be able to uh, work your way through, that, through the Elite Series points? Probably one of the toughest ways to make the classic. You know, I mean, man, I've, if you look at my results, I always have one tournament or two tournaments that are just really bad, and the rest of them are kind of right in the middle of the road. But when you have that one tournament that just uh, it just kills you, it's just so hard to recover. And uh, this year, my goal is to avoid that one tournament where I just tank. You know, if you can finish – if you obviously, we want to win every tournament, like you were saying. But if you can finish in the middle of the road – 
you know, nearly every time. I think that'll that'll definitely help your chances of getting in the classic. And for me, as an angler, that would mean the world to me because I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just trying to trying to scrape by right now and get what I can get. And of course, we all want to uh, we all want to do better for ourselves and do better for our family. And that is that will be a huge step in the right direction. Well, Shane, thank you for letting us jump in and interrupt your time there, hanging out in the shop, making some baits. We're going to let you get back to work. I know John will appreciate uh, another hand <laughs> in the pot there to make some baits. So we'll let you go, Shane, but we hope to see you the rest of the season as we get started back up, uh, maybe through the lens of a Bassmaster Live camera instead. Man, I hope so. We, uh, we're we looking forward to it and looking forward to, uh, look forward to getting the season going and uh, maybe we're going to slip up win one this year. Maybe so. That's Shane Leinberger, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro, hanging out, pouring some baits, making some lures for uh, the start of the season. It's weird to say that, the start of the season basically in June, but with one Elite Series event under our belts, we have most of the season left in store. So it should be a fun summer and fall for the 2020 Bassmaster Elite Series.